So I think there's a huge assumption with people who haven't shot film before that film specifically is really scary, it's really intimidating, um, and a lot of it I think comes down to the fact that when you're normally you know, pulling up your DSLR or mirrorless camera or something like that, a lot of the mirrorless ones you can already see the exposure beforehand, and on digital ones, you know, the regular DSLRs, you can look at the back and actually see kind of what's going on. You can click, look, click, look, and get your settings straight. And I think the thing that everyone assumes and is really, really worried about is that they have to nail their exposure like perfectly. If they don't, everything's gonna be ruined because if you don't nail your exposure and you're shooting on something like JPEG on a digital camera, you know, the raw file can do a lot, but if you're shooting on JPEG and you look at the back of it, the JPEG preview of the raw image is also just gonna look like garbage. Um, and you know, you're gonna have to come back and get that. And I think people assume that with film, whatever that thing that would be on the back of your camera or whatever, if you don't just nail that perfectly, then you're kind of toast. The thing about film though, is that is not the case at all. There is so much flexibility in film, um, much more than a raw file even in some instances. So I have this old Rolleiflex camera. It obviously looks amazing. Um, one of the most classic camera designs and stuff like that there is. But the problem is, the shutter speed on this camera is stuck at 1 60th of a second. So I can't actually change it because everything's all messed up on here. So I have to send it out. But before I did, I wanted to just try out a theory that I had about color negative film specifically and see if I was kind of on the right track or not. So I loaded this thing with Portra 400, which is one of the most flexible, one of the most versatile films out there. It borrows from Kodak's motion picture stock technology. So there's just a lot of amazing stuff that goes into it. So I wanted to see how much you could actually overexpose color negative film and still have a decent usable image. So I photographed an entire roll, both indoors and outdoors on Portra 400 at 1 60th of a second at F3.5. Yeah. That's right, the entire roll, indoor, outdoor, everything completely different. So what I did was I took my son out on a walk, we walked around the neighborhood, we took some photos indoors, and I documented what the light meter actually told me that my exposure should be versus what I was actually taking it. So again, I photographed all of these at the exact same exposure at 1 60th of a second, F3.5 on Portrait 400 film. So I'm gonna show you all 12 photographs that I took on that roll. They were all taken within about an hour of each other. Um, obviously, again, both indoor, outdoor, but the same exposure. So this first one, the meter told me that the exposure that I had was actually dead on. So this photo right here, as well as this next photo right here, were both just taken of my son in our playroom. Dead on, perfect exposures, they look great, no issues. Fantastic, works as it should. So for these next two photographs, they were obviously both photographed indoors, and my meter gave me a reading of 1 60th of a second and f1.4. So that exposure is two and two thirds stops under what my camera could actually produce because my shutter speed, again, was stopped at that point, so I couldn't go any lower, and my aperture doesn't go any lower on that camera than 3.5. So when it said that I needed an aperture of 1.4, my only option was essentially to underexpose by almost three stops. Now, these were obviously not ideal exposures by any means, but you can still see that there's plenty of detail. It's not necessarily the best photograph in the world, but three stops underexposed. If you did that on digital, you could definitely bring some of it back and and mess with it a little bit, but even three stops is quite a bit, even for a digital RAW file. Okay, so here is where film gets a little bit insane. It was obviously like a sunny fall day, we went for a walk, all that kind of stuff, but again, these photos were taken at F3.5, 1 60th of a second, and on Portrait 400 film, and they are six and one third stops overexposed. Now, if you tried to do that on any digital camera I know, I don't know a single digital camera that would make even close to a usable image at six and one third stops overexposed. I mean, you'd have to, I mean, Lightroom doesn't even allow you to do six stops. I think their max is five. So six and one third stops is an absolutely insane amount of overexposure. But as you can see, in color negative film, the highlights have so much information in them. Obviously I blew focus on this first one a little bit, but you can see in here that I didn't even lose any detail. 
the sky is blue, all this stuff, it's direct sunlight later in the day. You can see that this is super harsh, but it nails exposure perfectly. The guys at Indie Film Lab were able to scan it back. Obviously it was overexposed, but there is a completely usable image at six and one third stops overexposed. On the second photograph here, the only thing that is like possibly unusable is the house that is in direct sunlight. It is a white house direct sun on it and everything else is completely usable there's still a ton of information in the shadows overall it looks like it was a good exposure but again i was six and one third stops overexposed all right so don't mind the blurriness here again 1 of a second isn't that fast of a shutter speed but this photograph was a little over two stops overexposed again try to overexpose two stops on a digital camera it's going to look like garbage but this looks perfect this next photo taken in our kitchen was about two stops underexposed. Again, it looks pretty darn good. I mean, it's not the best I've ever taken, right? But it's still what I would consider something that would work for me. So these next three were within, you know, a third stop or so of being a correct exposure. Um, so we'll go through, and this is obviously what it's supposed to look like. So this one, this one, if any of you have a toddler, you've probably seen a lot of these before. Uh, this one, which is definitely one of my favorite photos I've ever taken on any camera of anything ever. Um, it just looks amazing. And I love how the Rolleiflex specifically just kind of renders all that stuff. Um, super cool. And then this last photo, um, you can tell, again, there's a little blurriness, a little bit of discoloration, stuff like that. It was two stops underexposed, um, but still like, not the best image in the world, but for family memory and stuff like that, it's completely usable. So in all, with my most underexposed photos, they were about three stops underexposed, and my most overexposed photos were about six stops overexposed. And as you can see, like they're all pretty close to being in some sort of usable range as far as um, maybe not professionally, maybe not something that I would, you know, be putting out there as client work, but for someone who's just walking around, documenting life, um, taking photos of my family, traveling, all that kind of stuff, they definitely work for me. But in general, if you're kind of like just learning, doing it for memory's sake, all that kind of stuff, and you're not doing something really, really serious, you have a lot of flexibility in there. So if you're new to film, hopefully this encourages you to just get out there and try it. You definitely don't have to be perfect. Um, again, a nine stop difference. If you were doing that on a digital camera, it would look terrible. But I could know that I could walk around and photograph with this thing, knowing that as long as I'm overexposing, I'm gonna get some pretty usable negatives, which is amazing. Now, do I recommend you photograph things six stop overexposed on really any film stock? Definitely not. You're gonna to want to get as close as you can to a normal exposure as possible. But if that's what's holding you back and that's what you're most worried about, you're worried about just ruining a roll of film or wasting your time or anything like that, just know that when in doubt, overexpose by a stop or two. Um, one of the easiest ways to do this is just to set your internal meter if you have one, set it to either plus one if it has an exposure compensation, or just simply set your ISO to half of whatever the number is. So if you're shooting with Portrait 400 film, just put the ISO, set it manually to 200. Uh, or if you're shooting like, let's say, Ultramax 400, set it to 200, or Gold 200, set it to 100. Uh, if you just take the number that your film says and divide it by two, cut it in half, just set that up, your camera will automatically overexpose by one stop, which will just give you a lot more flexibility and a lot more space in that negative for things to look good. I know it might sound counterintuitive, especially if you're a digital photographer. If you are used to shooting with digital cameras, those things want you to underexpose. There's not a lot of room in the highlights, but film is the exact opposite. It's a negative for a reason, so there's a lot of information in the highlights and not as much information in the shadows. So if you're new, go out, overexpose a little bit, and things are most likely gonna turn out pretty fine. Hopefully that was helpful. Drop any questions you might have in the comments below. I'll link to some good resources, some films to try out below. And if you have any suggestions on ways to make it easier for people to start shooting film, drop that down below too. I think that the film photography community often is really discouraging to people and that's another reason why they don't try it. Um, so if you have any words of encouragement as a film photographer to give to people looking to shoot film, drop them below. And if you're new, 
please ask questions. I would love to answer them and help you along your journey. So if you like this video, please like, subscribe, all that stuff to help the channel. And thanks again. See you on the next one. Peace.